Hello, I'd like to welcome you to this demonstration of Copy Data Management for Oracle with EMC AppSync, leveraging the power of Extreme.io virtual copy technology. In this demonstration of AppSync for Oracle, I'll show how to discover hosts. Then I'll show how to repurpose a production database to create a first generation AppSync copy. Now we'll call that the gold development copy. So a gold development copy is the copy of a database where one would tend to mask or redact uh, some sensitive data so as to protect it from being exposed to developers' eyes. I'll then show how to create five second generation AppSync copies from the gold development copy. And finally, I'll show an example of a developer working in his or her own copy of the database uh, suffering uh, some data loss and simply refreshing back to the gold development copy. The first task to perform in order to implement copy data management services with Extreme.io and AppSync is to log in to AppSync and discover the hosts. The first thing we do is to go into settings servers, add Unix servers, well, Linux servers, enter the IP addresses, credentials. What I'll do at this time is bring management of two hosts into AppSync. As we can see, AppSync has completed its discovery of databases and hosts. So I'll close that tab and then go into uh, Copy Management, Oracle. And we have an SAP database. Click to expose a little bit of detail. And there we have it. And now that we have hosts discovered in AppSync, it's time to explore the integration of AppSync and Extreme.io. But first, let's take a look at the Extreme.io GUI. So here on the screen, I have the Extreme.io GUI with the dashboard tab. Uh, on the screen, we can see that for the demo, I've allocated eight terabytes of Extreme.io volume capacity. Let's get some detail for that in the configuration tab. What you can see is that I've created four Extreme.io volumes. Each of them are two terabytes in size, and they are visible to hosts as four, indep uh, rather four uh, in independent LUNs, so for a total of eight terabytes. Now back to the dashboard. So our eight terabytes, however, because this is extreme IO, eight terabytes is thinly provisioned. But here we see that from the volumes, there is a difference of six terabytes to eight terabytes. And this is because with Oracle, uh, if you take an extreme IO volume and give it to Oracle ASM as an ASM disk, well, there's nothing but a little header uh, that's written onto that um, two terabyte uh, ASM disk, and the rest um, doesn't demand any capacity from the Extreme IO array. It remains all thinly provisioned. However, once creating file systems, well, then the space in the Extreme IO array will go from thin to consumed. Here we can see the ASM command output showing that I've created table spaces to the size of about six terabytes. Now, all volumes and Extreme IO virtual copies or snapshots in the Extreme IO storage array are treated with rich data reduction services, starting with deduplication and compression. So what we see here is that even though I've allocated eight terabytes and there's six terabytes of Oracle table spaces inside of that eight terabytes, well, that's only demanded 1.3 terabytes of physical from the array. And this is because we are enjoying a compression ratio of 3.3 to one. So this serves as the start point for space utilization during our demonstration. Before we've even created yet a single Extreme IO virtual copy through AppSync repurposing of databases, we see that the SAP database that from an ASM perspective consumes nearly six terabytes 
is only consuming 1.3 terabytes in the array. Let's see how that changes as we start to add copies of data for test, dev, and QA. And it's time now to repurpose our first database. Repurposing in AppSync is essentially creating an Extreme IO virtual copy. We'll enter the GUI through Copy Management and select our database. Okay, so the simulated workflow for this demonstration is, as I've already said, the SAP database highlighted here is our simulated production database. The task that I'm about to demonstrate is the task of creating a repurposed first generation copy. Now, this copy will serve as our dev gold image, uh, if you will. This is the image of the database that we will uh, perform our data masking or redacting uh, efforts uh, on the data so that what's left is suitable for developers' eyes. So at this point, it's nothing more than just click repurpose, create a repurpose copy, stipulating first gen copy. And I'd like to give it a name that makes sense to us, calling it dev gold, allowing the default of snap. Run now. And the task is complete. Close the dialog and we can see our status. By drilling down, we can see that we have a first generation copy called Dev Gold, and it is of the source Production SAP database. Okay, well, so that would be only so interesting unless, of course, we can mount this database and see if it is, in fact, a functional database. So into AppSync here, I'll say mount. What I would like to do is say mount on a standalone server and recover, but I want to use this other host that's in my cluster. So read write is the permissions. Because it is my dev gold, I'll name this D0, easy tracking. And finish. Okay, and so that procedure is complete. And now we can see mount status mounted on the host I chose and recovery status is success. Okay, well, so our dev gold repurposed database that we mounted as an instance called D0 SAP on this host. So let's uh, do this. So yes, indeed, this is a repurposed mounted first generation AppSync database copy. And it's the database copy that I will use to create second generation copies for developers in this demo model. Okay, well now, so let's go back into the Extreme IO GUI and take a look at the dashboard. So here we see that we no longer only have volumes to the tune of eight terabytes. Well, we have 16 terabytes of volume capacity now. And indeed, we haven't really changed our physical capacity utilization because we are leveraging Extreme IO virtual copy technology. As we can see in the configuration tab, here we have our original volumes that are created for the production SAP database, but AppSync has created these additional four volumes that are mounted as LUNs on the host that I specified. And indeed, over in the virtual tab for management, uh, you can see that they are AppSync snapshots. Okay, well, since we have our AppSync database, that is the repurposed production database, our first generation dev gold AppSync database, it's time now to um, begin to repurpose that, making second generation copies for active developers. So here we are in AppSync, repurpose. Since it's a first gen copy, this will be a second gen copy. I'd like to call it 
D1 and now that's complete repeating that process I have another developer I would like to call this D2 for developer 2 and that's finished Finally, we will create yet one more, call it D5, complete. And so there we have it. Now we have five copies of our first generation copy, which is our dev gold image, which is sourced from the SAP production database. And so now that we have our production SAP database, along with our dev gold master copy for development uh, test and QA and in the previous segment we've created five developer copies so we have seven copies of the database now and here we are back in the extreme IO GUI the dashboard tab shows us that well since we have seven copies of the database we now are using 56 terabytes of volume capacity however we see that we remain 100 percent space efficient because physical capacity has remained at that 1.9 terabytes of space in use, physical. The detail for that can be seen in the configuration tab where it's seen that AppSync has created a great deal of Extreme IO virtual copies and has uh, on some of these hosts, these are have been mounted uh, with AppSync and on the others they remain unmounted. But yet here we see that AppSync is performing all of the management, all of the interaction with Extreme IO in order to allow very fluid usage of data and Extreme IO. So at this point, it's time to take a look at the power of refreshing a snapshot. So here I have a list of my databases. What I intend to demonstrate is that the developer using the D1 copy of the database is going to corrupt his copy and then we will refresh to recover from such a disaster. So connecting via SQL net to the database, the first thing I'll do is do a quick count of rows of the table that uh, we will suffer uh, data loss on. A little over two billion rows. So that is a non-recoverable situation right there, and this developer is therefore no longer productive. So he might as well exit and then enter the AppSync GUI, say unmount, and so the unmount is complete, and now the task is to refresh and then mount the database. Okay, so now it's time once again to connect to the database. See if the table has been restored. Yes, of course, it's there because of the snapshot refresh. Time to count the rows. And here we see that our row count has been restored. So at this point, the developer who mistakenly corrupted his database uh, by dropping a table was able with self-service to go back and refresh from the dev gold image. And this concludes our demonstration of AppSync for Oracle powered by Extreme IO virtual copy technology. Thank you.